ICMA, Instituto de Ciencia de Materiales de Aragón. In an ever-changing world, in a world of constant needs, a study of materials offers us a plethora of possibilities. In response to these needs, the Aragon Materials Science Institute, ICMA, a joint research institute between the University of Zaragoza and CESIC, was founded over 30 years ago. Its clear objective is to contribute to advancing knowledge in the area of science and technology of materials. At ICMA, we cover the whole process, from research through to development and in-society transfer. People are our most important tool and material, the creativity, effectiveness and capacity of our researchers. Superconductor materials can carry a current with zero resistance when they are cooled to low temperatures. This is very important because compared to copper coils, superconducting coils are more lightweight and compact. At ICMA, we are working on a project to develop a new wind turbine using superconductor materials. At ICMA, we are developing the computers of the future. At ICMA, we're trying to combine materials science, low temperature physics and nanotechnology to make a quantum computer, or at least a first prototype. Our plan is to use bits of quantum information, or qubits, which are going to be like atoms, specifically magnetic atoms within a material. We have molecules like this one, which encapsulate a magnetic atom. This atom behaves like a tiny magnet. If I then draw an arrow, this arrow tells us about the orientation of the magnetic field that the molecule generates. The arrow can point upwards, and I can then assign a 1 to it. Or it can point downwards, and then I assign a 0 to it. I now have a code for the information. In the last few years, we've shown at ICMA that these molecules can be in states in which the arrow is pointing upwards and downwards at the same time. Therefore, they follow the laws of quantum physics and can be seen as qubits. However, having a qubit is still far from having a quantum computer, although it is a necessary step. What we now need is to know how to build a more complex architecture from this, something that is going to provide the capacity to outdo the best conventional computer. Thus, we're working on integrating the molecules into devices that will eventually enable us to carry out all the basic operations on these qubits. An example would be a transmission line, like this, which essentially consists of three parallel cables by which electromagnetic radiation, a wave, can propagate. By interacting with this tiny molecule, the wave allows us to read the state, i.e. to know the information stored in it, change the state, and, finally, enable us to move information from this unit to another in such a way that we can begin to build. We have the Lego bricks, but only now can we begin to build more complex things. At ICMA, we are working to create more effective solar panels. At the Aragon Materials Science Institute, we've been working on a new project aimed at the preparation of a new type of so-called third-generation photovoltaic devices. Such systems try, to some extent, to imitate the process that takes place during photosynthesis in plants. In this type of cell, one of the main components is a dye. This dye is responsible for capturing solar energy and transforming it into electricity. At ICMA, new organic semiconductor materials are also being prepared in order to improve electron transport in these systems. Liquid crystals are being used to accomplish this. In other words, these are molecules which self-organize in order to create appropriate paths to obtain more efficient electronic transport. And unlike silicon panels, such third-generation cells can work in low light conditions, even indoors, making them particularly suitable for incorporation into portable devices. At ICMA, we want to control light. At ICMA, we have a group working on nanophotonics and quantum circuits. Basically, the intention is to confine electromagnetic radiation, i.e. the light that propagates in a very small region in space, and which may be either a point or a waveguide. 
This can already be achieved with dielectric or transparent waveguides, but we're trying to confine light even more. With this we want to do several things, like have antennas for visible light. Antennas are already widely used, for instance for radio waves, but not for light, which is in a different frequency range. We can also make very confined sources of both light and heat, and these are being used for thermal treatment of tumors. Additionally, it's very interesting to be able to couple light and matter efficiently, so that we can bring energy that is within matter and place it in light, and vice versa in a regular and controlled way. In order to achieve this concentration of light, we need materials that conduct electricity. We are studying a material that has appeared recently, graphene. Despite being only one atom thick, it has spectacular electromagnetic properties. We've been working on fuel cells at the Aragon Material Science Institute for over 12 years mainly on solid oxide fuel cells operating at high temperatures above 500 degrees and even up to 1000 degrees centigrade. The advantage of this type of fuel cells is that due to their high operating temperatures, they can use cheap catalyzers. This means they can achieve higher efficiencies, in some cases over 80%, and they are very versatile. It's possible to use them in small devices to produce electricity, for example in a mobile phone, or to generate electricity to power big buildings. In the field of polymeric materials, we work at ICMA on the development of new polymers and functional polymeric systems, predominantly on systems with optical and electronic functionality, but also on biocompatible polymers. These are basically polymers able to interact favorably with living systems. At ICMA, we have developed a series of tools based on the use of lasers that allow us to control the structure of matter on the microscopic level. Holography, direct laser writing and digital printing have enabled us to improve the performance of liquid crystal displays or increase the capacity of optical storage systems. In the field of regenerative medicine, we are exploring the use of microstructured surfaces as supports for cell growth, trying to generate structures that mimic the cell environment guiding its growth and morphology. At ICMA, we are studying new materials for biomedical applications. Magnetic nanoparticles attached to anti-tumor drugs would, with the aid of magnetic field, allow us to concentrate the drug within the tumor, thus minimizing the side effects of chemotherapy on the rest of the organism. We are also developing magnetic nanoparticles that can attach to tumors. By applying an alternating magnetic field, these nanoparticles will heat up, thereby increasing the temperature of the tumor and killing it. Our research is also focused on regenerative medicine to repair damaged tissue. Imagine damaged knee cartilage. The body has a limited capacity to regenerate it and osteoarthritis appears. We are now preparing new biocompatible polymers that can be used to build a scaffold that, under the right conditions, will help the patient's cells to repair the damaged tissue. We are also developing nanogels, nanovesicles and polymeric nanoparticles in general, which are capable of delivering drugs into diseased cells and controlling how and where the drug is released. This is a smart strategy which allows the dose and administration time and target area of the drug activity to be optimized so that it is not toxic to other body parts. The Institute is pursuing two transversal lines of inquiry, with researchers from different areas working together. One of these lines is dedicated to the development of advanced scientific instruments, and we've been involved in this for over 30 years. 
When we started, such instruments were not bought in, but developed by our own scientists, who then used them for their own experiments. The other line of research covers our work at large international facilities. Large facilities are rather like great cathedrals of science. They consist of large-scale instruments that one country alone would not be able to construct and maintain. Hence, there are various countries that contribute to the development of large-scale facilities, and our Spanish scientists travel all over the world to such facilities to carry out experiments. For example, in Grenoble, the Institute has an instrument with which we provide a service for the whole of Spain. We're not only users of these large-scale facilities, but also involved in the management committees. There are also two units whose objective is to be in direct contact with society at large. One of these is the Scientific Culture Unit. This unit organizes different activities to publicize and disclose the topics being studied by ICMA. We work in laboratories and what we do is make new materials, materials for many purposes. The other main area is the Technology Transfer Unit, whose mission is to identify the scientific capacities of our researchers. Equally, it has to be aware of the needs of the business fabric. From this point on, it creates inertia and projects to develop together. Furthermore, an intrinsic feature of ICMA is its internationalization. We work with different international bodies, universities, research centers, companies, and naturally students, who do their doctoral thesis with us. Likewise, researchers from different countries undertake their work here. Mi chiamo Giulia Lorusso, lavoro nell'ICMA dal 2012 come postdoc nel gruppo di Molchip. Hello, my name is Mark Jenkins, I'm from the UK. I'm doing my PhD here at the ICMA under the supervision of Dr. Fernando Luis. My name is Tetiana Slipchenko, I'm from Ukraine. In Ukraine I worked with superconductors, but um, I looked for new topic of investigation and I found them here and ICMA. At ICMA, we have developed the world's first laser furnace. It combines conventional thermal treatment with a laser that hardens and modifies ceramic tile and glass surfaces, thereby achieving very precise and attractive decorative patterns. The laser furnace process increases the surface durability of the material and allows the thickness of ceramics and glass tiles to be reduced by 50%, thereby significantly reducing the use of natural resources and water. This new technology developed at IGMA allows lighter materials to be processed. These are manufactured at lower volume temperatures, yielding significant energy savings. This technology has been transferred to industry. It is contributing to the development of new and improved quality ceramics and glass products, while increasing energy efficiency and lowering greenhouse gas emissions. Another successful case has been the development of helium recovery plants, based on a new technology developed and patented by Thesic and the University of Saragossa and transferred to Quantum Design International. The commercial versions of these plants are being installed in hospitals and laboratories worldwide. Given the increasingly evident shortage of helium, this technology already means the magnetic resonance image, the magnetoencephalograph at many hospitals, and the low temperature equipment in many research laboratories that have already acquired it, are no longer dependent on an external liquid helium supply. Thus, they are permanently functioning at much lower operating costs. In coordination with BSH Spain, the Institute has created an innovative laser marking project. La 
The collaboration between BSH Spain and ICMA started in 2005 when we signed the first collaboration agreement. Since then, we've signed over 10 collaboration agreements, highlighting the potential of the Institute to transfer knowledge from the academic world to industry. Our most important project is focused on laser marking for aesthetic purposes of the glass ceramics used in our home appliances. The main goal of the project is to develop an industrial process which is evolving at the same time as the laser technology in which ICMA has expertise. However, we haven't stopped here. We've gone one step further. BSH has coordinated a project funded by the European Community through its seventh frame program. The coordination was carried out from Spain and the project, called UV Marking, has a budget of over 6 million euros. The goal of the project is to improve the laser processes used on the materials needed for our home appliances. The participation of ICMA was essential and BSH has undoubtedly trusted the Institute as a partner, giving it its own budget to support the scientific aspects of the project. The benefit of this collaboration not only lies in the knowledge transfer, but also in the transfer of persons. Throughout this collaboration we've trained more than 50 students, and currently we have seven individuals working on their PhD theses, driving the scientific expertise of the Institute towards the goals of our company. Creating science, researching, innovating, transferring knowledge. ICMA, Instituto de Ciencia de Materiales de Aragón.